Okay. So, whenever you're ready, you can I start. I am ready. Is there going to be any countdown? Uh, yeah, you can put a countdown and then when, when you get down to one, I will start the timer, but I'll make sure that's on the actual stream. Perfect. Countdown. Okay. So I am going to start now. Three, two, one, and go. Hello, good morning everyone. It's Fire Spitter here with Bleed 2, and today we're gonna play this through. We are playing on Story New Game Easy, which is basically one of the easier categories of this game. And that is sort of to highlight the specs of this game, as it's very, very easy for everyone to keep track of what's happening. The first trick I'm gonna talk about is one we have already seen called dash resetting. Normally you can only dash three times like that, but if you are going on an edge or doing some very, very precise maneuvers, you can reset. Which means that you can, in theory, dash like this forever. So yeah, that's the primary trick of this category. There are a couple more tricks, but most of those are boss specific. Which we're gonna come to when we come to the bosses. But most of the, this run is basically using that one trick. Here comes the first real boss, which is Blast Jumper. This boss is pretty easy. We are basically going to do one thing we get a lot of this run, and that's reflect purple stuff. We're hoping for purple stuff and hoping to reflect purple stuff. And we got the perfect RNG here. We basically got both the ball and the dash. That is fen a phenomenal start. And we beat the boss at a very, very good place here. Next up comes an auto scroller. This section is relatively easy, there is not much I can do wrong here. Worst case, you take some damage, but that shouldn't be a problem as we're playing on easy. As even if you take damage, the next buff is nowhere near any risk at all, even if you have some hits taken. The next boss is gonna shoot a lot, of bullet, a lot of bullet trains at us, you'll see what I mean. And we are praying once again for purple stuff. Because in this game there is like one fundamental rule. We can reflect every, almost everything that's purple. Basically everything that's purple we can reflect, but laser beams have some special rules to them which makes them... You can't reflect them back to bosses basically. There we go, we got only purple lanes there, and then we got a yellow. We're gonna ignore that one because we can't do that, and the boss turned yellow, so we can't reflect it, but we still gotta clear up the boss very quickly there. And that was stage one, on to stage two. Stage two is probably the most movement intensive stage in this entire game. We are going to see a lot of dash resetting here, so I'm very very much going to highlight just how powerful the dash resetting can be in this game, on this split. After the first boss, we're gonna see a long section where it's very possible to do nothing but dash resetting. There we go, good dash resetting. And there comes the Kitty Shopper. It's very, very easy boss, but we are having a lot of stuff to reflect. The worst thing this boss can do is... The thing it did there, but it goes behind the screen, that you can hit for a lot of time. Basically, the worst thing boss can do in this game is to pick up, enter invulnerability states where you can't hit them. Because that obviously loses a lot of time, because you want as much uptime on the boss as possible. We're going to see a lot of that later on in the run on a specific boss that has a very, very weird pattern. Here we are at the dash reset section. As you see, I keep on dashing forever there, basically. And here we are the car boss. This boss has three different patterns. It can either go up, either put a laser at us, or the best case scenario, it puts out a, puts out a rocket. If it puts out a orange rock, not not orange rocket, purple rocket, we can reflect it. Like, no, oh, that's not the right rocket. We can't reflect that one. And we, there we go. That was a pretty slow boss fight, but there's nothing we can do there really. We can only hope that it does purple stuff. That's the thing for most bosses in this game. You can only basically hopefully do what you want them to do. So you get a lot of purples to reflect. And then of course to reflect them. Which can sometimes be a tall order which is gonna be very late in the run. So there is a very specific mechanic that's pretty hard to handle well. 
in Bobby Purple. Even on easy, that fight is a little annoying to get the purple perfectly on. And here is the first moment we get to meet Valentine. She is the main antagonist of this game. Her goal is basically to become the best super villain in the world. And how do you become the best super villain in the world? That's a pretty easy thing. You defeat the best hero in the world. That's pretty much the story for this game. And Rin is obviously the best hero in the world. A title she got in the first game after basically defeating every other hero that existed. And we're done. She has three patterns. We saw, I think we saw two or three. I think we saw all three of them. The most annoying one is the car pattern, obviously, which we can reflect, because if we fail that mechanic, if we fail to reflect anything at all, the truck will get hit, and the yellow-haired guy here won't shoot her. Which is a huge time loss. You lose, like, about 10 seconds every time you fail that, so it's very, very good we got at first try. It's not always you get it first try, it's very easy to mess up the purple cars. And now we have all score section, and then we're gonna have red. And after the next boss fight, it will be a great time to read incentives. Because we're gonna have a pretty long auto scroll section after the next boss. Red is a very interesting boss. She is. While the boss actually we're reflecting is not super free, she's gonna either do purple or yellow. If she keeps doing purple, it's pretty easy to beat her, but once she starts doing yellow. You are basically gonna have to go from a dodge position to a position where you can do things to her and reflect. Which can be easy, easier said than done, really. And we have a very, very quick red fight here, and now it's the time to read incentives. Not incentives, donations. Uh, we don't have any donations at the moment, right? Okay. Um... Hopefully that's, that wasn't uh, disrupting you or anything there when I said that. But no, we haven't got any donations at the moment. But if anybody does want to go and donate, go to tiltify.com for slash add instance for slash instance Edith on level up 2020, I think is the link, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's in the panel, but I'll just double check that now whilst I remember. And uh, we'll go on to, yeah, we'll try and get some more donations in if we can. But yeah, good luck. Fire us pleasure. Thank you. Now we're facing up against Ninja, which is, in my opinion, one of the more annoying bosses in the game. Stage 1 is pretty easy, stage 2 though requires, well it doesn't require but we are abusing a little glitch here where we stand at a certain distance where he doesn't reflect our sword and we can still damage him. Normally we are not supposed to be able to damage him when he's in that stance but if we use this katana like this and stand at a certain distance we can actually damage him without getting the pushback from the sword. If we try to shoot at him he's going to reflect the bullets basically. There is in endless mode and in challenge mode you can actually shoot at him normally with the gun if you are at a very specific instance due to our glitch in how he operates. Which is a very very interesting glitch. And up next is Rex Rocket. This fight is pretty soft. We're gonna get he's gonna use these platforms to us and we're gonna jump on him. And sometimes if we're lucky he's gonna shoot purple rockets. These rockets may look purple, but they are not purple compared to the rockets you can shoot. You'll see exactly how purple those rockets are. And of course we're gonna reflect those purple. It's one of the... there, there it is. Those are actually one of the purple stuff that's actually kinda hard to reflect, but they are not stupidly hard to reflect. There we go, that was a fantastic Rex rock, rock, Rocket fight. Now we're going on to the next split. This split is... I call it the boss gauntlet. Oh, that was a gold. That was a gold. This split is called the boss gauntlet because at the end of it we are gonna have four boss fights in a row. All of which are basically remakes of bosses from the previous game. We start off with Chef Spammer here. We're gonna try to be close and personal with him, we do just that, to basically destroy them without losing time. Get starting the spinning animation, which is fantastic. It's very easy, easy damage to him here. He's starting very, very strong. I'm hoping for... there we go. That was a 
great, great chef spammer fight. He has three patterns, the spinning thing, and he can also suck up balls. The balls he use up. And then he can... He can basically shoot out two purple things or two yellow things. What we don't want of these is him to shoot out two yellow things. On normal and upwards, what you don't want is him to go into the sucking things up animation because then he moves around. But on easy doesn't move around there, so it's actually not too terrible. It's actually quite manageable on easy when if it does that. Which reduces the RNG of that fight quite a bit. As there is really no bad pattern. And we got a hit there, that was unfortunate. But we're still doing fine. And we're in the boss complex. This is gonna be four boss in a row. The first boss got me, there's not much to say. It's gonna float around. We hope he's gonna descend, and if it descends, I hope it turns purple so we can reflect him. Next bosses though are the worms. They are basically two bosses. They're pretty easy, but they are... They are a little annoying. They have some RNG to them. And we don't get to see a descending Guppy, sadly, which is gonna lose a little bit of time, but it's not huge. The big boss here that I'm gonna start talking about now, because there's a lot of them, is Rubble White. It's basically the individually hardest boss in the game, in my opinion. At least if you're trying to speedrun him, because when you speedrun him, you won't spin around with him. You will see what I mean. He's basically a spinning wheel. And you want to spin with him to be able to shoot at him, because he has... Only like, you'll see, you'll see exactly what I mean when we see him. But he has a shield around him with like one spot where you can shoot at him most of the time. I'm not sure if it's intended or not to shoot spin around with him, but it's basically there to protect him because he's actually having quite low health. Actually having very low health. He can do two things, he can either stop and shoot rockets later on, like that, or he can turn purple or yellow. We want him to turn purple or yellow because then he, that's basically indicator he's gonna throw away his shield, which means that we are having complete time to do damage to him. We can, just as with the Ninja, we can't always hurt him with Katana, as the Katana basically bypasses his shield, as the hitbox with Katana is like not stopped by it. That was a pretty good white fight, it wasn't flawless, but it was very good. And here comes Bunny, she has two patterns we can do. He can either stop and throw a Kartos, or this one, which is basically actually the purple ladders, this is what we want, if we get two of those, we can get a two cycle fight on her, which saves a lot of time. And we got it. We got the two cycle bunny, that's fantastic, that's exactly what we want. This next split coming up is the hardest split of the run. Because of the huge amount of hard bosses and kinda rough platforming. The first boss up is the probably hardest one in my opinion, which is Segment Slider. It works. Kinda, it's gonna shoot away platforms at us, but we can't jump those platforms. It's basically composed of like some metal, you'll see what I mean, and he has a core. And you can only damage the core, so it's kinda RNG when you shoot away the platforms, you just gonna shoot them out in a pattern that exposes the core quickly or not. It's not huge RNG time, loss of time gain though. We can do a little trick here though that I'm going to do with the katana, where we're gonna do the same thing we did against Rubble White. Okay, that wasn't too good. That was a short cycle, we want fast cycles. Or, we want slow cycles, we basically want to have the core exposed as much as possible, like this. Because that means there are, there's a lot of time of the boss being exposed to. That was a pretty good segment slider. Health situation is also looking pretty good. And that's gonna matter, because we have bubble sections coming up, and it's very easy, even if you're experienced with the game, to take damage during the bubble section. Because of the platforming required. This bubble section is relatively easy, we're basically on weightless state now, and we gotta be like this until we finish these, these two stage pop fights. We just gotta start off with this stage, that's pretty easy, that's good. If we can get that again, we are very good. There we go, perfect RNG on that part. Perfect RNG. Next up is, it's gonna start spinning around with those things around the shield. We can't hurt it even with the katana strat here actually. It's a little weird. But it's gonna do attacks and if we reflect those attacks properly, it 
the, it, a part of the boss can be revealed to us, we can start damaging it. The goal here is basically the free cycle. If we get free cycle on this boss, we're good, and there we go, we got full, full reveal there. That's amazing to get the marathon run. It's pretty hard to pull off, but we did it. And that boss is done. Upcoming next is the part we call the RNG gate. This is, or I call it RNG gate, but this is basically where most runs either survive or die. Nothing we've done so far is gonna matter up until this point. If this point goes badly, the run is probably not going to be a very strong time. The next boss coming up have a lot of patterns. The two patterns we need to talk about though that's very important are the Pac-Man pattern and the Missile pattern. The boss is gonna turn into several things here and we want to turn to Pac-Man because then we can deliver a lot of damage and there is a lot of frames that we can hurt it. We don't want to turn to Rocket because the Rocket takes little damage and it's a very long animation. There we go, that was Rocket. That means that this run is probably not going to be good. That's not what we want. Everything else is kind of mediocre. It's like, it's fine if it happens. Are we gonna see a Pac-Man though? We have said everything except the Pac-Man now. I will not get the Pac-Man even. Pac-Man didn't want to make an appearance in this run, sadly. With the Pac-Man shape, he's basically gonna go around the screen and putting out dots. And you gotta shoot at him. He takes a lot of damage while in Pac-Man shape, and if you're lucky, he's gonna turn purple and you can reflect it for massive damage. It's by far the best pattern to get. By far. This run is probably not looking too good right now, from a PD per possibility perspective, but it's still a very good run. Because that fight didn't go very well. That is like the point where most world record attempts die, because you have to get decent RNG on that part to get a good run most of the time, unless you are playing phenomenally for the rest of the run. And here comes Valentine, she has four stages. Stage 1, 2 are pretty simple, we're gonna shoot at her. Stage 3 is when she's just gonna start getting interested, she's gonna spawn enemies at us, that's like her thing, and she used telekinesis. Having a good Valentine free. We're gonna take some intentional damage here because we're gonna do a uh, animation skip by dying in after the third phase. We don't want to be too low on health because the third phase of her fight is actually pretty hard. And we're off to phase 3. We basically want half health, because from half health we have enough time to jump down and take the intentional damage and to die before he, before the first possible time we can go up. We're not gonna go for the fastest cycle there though, because if we fail it, it loses a lot of time. So we're not gonna go for the super risky, super fast rat for that. We gotta intentionally lose like half a second or something just to play it safe. It's not worth it, because if you fail it, we basically have to redo this entire fight, which loses about 30 seconds. I don't think it's worth to change... I don't think it's that worth it to trade like half a second for 30 seconds. When she, when that spawn turns 2, we're gonna, she's gonna go up and we're gonna jump down now. And we, gotta, we successfully pull skip this thing here. He's gonna go instantly to this phase, otherwise he's gonna do a very long animation where she's gonna have to get hit by her audience, which is basically serving as a tutorial of new plays of what to do here. Before if we taunted, they would hit us, now they hit her, because the, her allies are very mad at her because she keeps throwing them around. He's a villain after all, but in their minds he's not. So now they have figured out that she's evil and we have to beat her. So we have now defeated the prime enemy of the game, but the run is still not over, there is another stage after this point. Because the yellow haired guy from before is basically out to take revenge on us for stealing the title from him of greatest hero of all time after he... After he basically glory hogged Brynn.
He basically took away all of her stuff. Like, literally. He took all her glory away from her. After she had done the deed. He basically kills steal her. Or something. But yeah, so he's gonna go back and be very, very mean to us. And he's trying to get back the title. So she and... So he and... She, Rin and Rival is having a bet right now. If Rin loses this, he gets to be the greatest hero of all time. If she wins though, they're gonna play video games forever and ever. Because all she really wants is someone to play video games with. And yes, this is the actual story. This is not something I make up, this is the actual story of what's going on here. This game has a very amazing story. It's amazing its absurdity. This is such a lovely story. And this boss is pretty easy. We're just gonna try to avoid the stuff from dust. And reflect purple rockets, as usual. We are soon going to see the final three bosses. You might think that he's defeated now, but he's not. He has he has a lot more stuff going on. We're gonna fall down now, and there's gonna come a boss. And this boss has purple rockets we want to reflect. If we if we're lucky, this boss is actually pretty easy, no matter what. And we easily got the purple rocket. That's that's huge. That's huge on this phase. And we gotta reflect those balls, those balls do a lot of damage. And he's gonna blaze, we're gonna want to go there because that way we can still damage him while he does that without taking the hit. And this was a pretty pretty fast fight. Pretty happy with this so far. Now we're gonna fight against the crawling core, which is basically that boss, but it's gonna go the other way. We're basically gonna move through this section. We're gonna create a good place for ourselves to move in. There we go. We have a lot of place to move at. He's gonna shoot late at the places we are we have created. Here's the thing, on easy he can shoot at the same place twice, so if we have gotten one twice... Oh, perfect, we got purple. If we have gotten late at one point during this place, we can stand there pretty safely for the rest of the pattern. Okay, gotta do that. That's not what we want, but it's fine. It's very fine here. And time for the final boss. This boss has three patterns we want to take a good care about. He has the katana pattern, which is the worst pattern he can do. And he has the gun pattern, where he's gonna pick up a gun. There we go. And if we're lucky, he's gonna do a purple kick, which we can reflect. And boom, we got it. He can also go up and initiate a tennis game. There's katana we don't want, but we are gonna use a strat here to basically mitigate the damage of that. It's a very sketchy strat, and there's a tennis game, which is the third one. That one is the scariest thing it does, because it can save you so much time if you get it. If you get close up and... Uh, second katana, that's not what we want. But we're still gonna manipulate it so it doesn't hurt us too much. And gong! I'm soon gonna say time. And that's when time is. Time! And that was three too. And now it's credits time, because now Brin has gotten a new best friend in the rival, who is now forever gonna play video games with her. Which we soon as on the title screen. Okay, so that's that's the end of the run. Yeah. Yep. What time hey, awesome. Get? So on my stream, I don't know if you were timing it yourself, but on my stream, 23.17.08, but I did actually end the timer a bit early then, because I didn't, I think, uh, a few seconds early, so... Yeah, 23 20 ish, I would say, but you know, okay, not too bad, I don't think. Yeah, that's a pretty good run, especially hey, considering we didn't get the good anti Italian fight. Ah, okay, that's fine. Uh, right then, so have we had any donations? We have not. So, guys, don't forget to go over and donate. I will be, I'll be sorting out the panels during the interval just now. Um, 
to make sure that the links are correct because I don't think I've actually updated the links in the panels because I've been so busy with everything else that it's not been able to be something I can do. So, gonna go over to the interval. Uh, next up, we have a. I don't know how to pronounce this, but ATN. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> uh, with Omen Sight Any Percent. So, we're gonna go over to that now. We're gonna go back over to the interval and. Uh, we'll be on with ATN in about 10 minutes. So thank you very much, Fire Splitter, for the run. Thank uh, you very much very for good. having me here. You're welcome. Right, I will see you again soon.